Hi guys, it's Eric from Life Debared, and today we're going to go over the setup and calibration of an electronic gimbal. So uh, any of your Movi, Ronin, or similar uh, full-size gimbals. Um, today we're going to be using the Movi Pro, a Red Dragon X, a Century 17 to 35 compact zoom, uh, a Nucleus Tilt and Nucleus M motor, and our small HG uh, Cine 7 with red control and uh, built-in transmitter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, prepping our camera. So the main thing is to do is re remove any of the unnecessary items that you don't need on the camera. You, the idea is to reduce the weight as much as possible. So for today, we're going to remove this dovetail base plate, um, which isn't needed for this system. Um, it's always a good idea to remove all unnecessary base plates, so we're going to put that aside. We're going to get the Moby base plate with the mustache. So for the red, we're going to make sure the mustache is pointed upwards. Uh, we're going to have our 15 mil rail mounted. We're going to use our two tapered screws. I always like to use two screws on a gimbal whenever possible. Uh, makes for obviously a more stable connection. Also make sure the camera is always pointed straight. So we're going to tighten these on. We don't need to wrench them down super tight, just enough. Turn the camera over. We also want to make sure that any of our memory cards are on and any other accessories that we do need mounted on the camera because those will affect the balance. So we're going to mount our lens. And get that all set up. That side. We're also going to mount our top plate. So this is really important for a full cage gimbal. You always want to have connections on both the top and the bottom of the camera. That helps for a more stable connection um, and reduces the, the, the common shake that you get uh, from some of the older open cage cameras. Now as far as positions go, um, it really depends on your lens, uh, motors, and accessories that you're doing. For this configuration, I'm putting everything about in the middle. Uh, I'm pushing the base plate all the way back against the camera body to give myself enough room to get the motor onto the lens. There's always a balance between where your motors need to go and engage with the lens, but also where you need to be able to slide the camera. So always keep that in mind. Now we're going to bring the camera in. Make sure that your locks are unlocked so that the camera can slide in easily. Um, and make sure the top cage is moved up and out of the way. So we want to get the bottom in first, and then we'll slide the top in uh, and mount it. So I like to pick it up by the lens, holding the camera, or by the lens mount, holding the camera and sliding it back. Try to find a decent balance point. We're still going to add more accessories. We just don't want it to fall. Don't let go because this could fall forward, damage your equipment. So make sure that you keep a hand on the camera body. Now once that's in, we're going to come back up here to the top of the cage. I'm going to slide this down until it engages with the camera making sure it's fully engaged, and then we're going to lock it in and lock it down. With most systems, you want to try to be as much balanced between these two points as possible. Uh, this is enough. This is fine. This is close enough. But with a smaller camera, you don't want a ton of space sticking out the top uh, with it all the way down to the bottom because you need to be able to have that adjustment space. Now, on this system, I like to run our red battery on the camera instead of powering from the gimbal. With the standard Mobi batteries, you always want to power from your own camera battery. With these modified uh, Ignite Digi systems, the TB5, uh, TB50 batteries, you can actually power the camera from it uh, if need be, but it's always nice to have that extra camera battery on the back that we can quickly swap. So now that the battery's on, put the camera back down, making sure that it's in a safe position, or grab our follow focus motor. There's a lot of different ways to mount the motors. I prefer to undersling them. When underslinging, what that does is creates a better balance so it puts the motor more centered on the, uh, on the gimbal. Um, it also allows for a better, tighter engagement so we can have a little more torque uh, so the motor doesn't jump off the gears and skip. So now the other thing you'll notice is I haven't put any cables on. We're always going to balance the gimbal first without any cabling so that we don't cause any uh, unnecessary drag, which will cause it to be very much more difficult to balance the system. So once we get everything balanced for the first time, then we'll cable it up, make a few minor tweaks, and then we should be good to go. So we're going to take the lens cap off. This is really important as the lens cap can cause, uh, can fight against our balance. So that's always really important. Remove the lens cap, but protect the lens. We're going to bring the system back around here. And we're going to adjust our front to back balance. So we're going to remove the locks. And we're going to start to slide the camera around to try to get that balance front to rear. So this is where I like to start, is with our front to rear balance. 
I want to get it as close as possible. And then we're going to lock that down. Now the next thing we want to do is get our right to left balance. So that would be the roll. So this is now tilting a little bit to one side. So we're going to make a quick adjustment here. Unlocking. I'm going to slide this slightly the opposite direction of the way it's rolling. We're going to lock it down again. And now we'll be to a good point where we're nice and balanced. So the next thing we want to do is point the camera upward. So turn it towards yourself. Point the camera upward if you have space or downward. Uh, if you don't have space, you can tilt it as far as you possibly can get to, but straight upward is the best. And what we're going to do is make sure that the cage is fully balanced. So we're going to unlock these four on the cage itself. And we're going to start to make some adjustments here so that the cage doesn't fall down. Uh, or, or fall backwards, so it becomes perfectly balanced. Once we get that done, at this point, we should be able to put the camera in almost any position, and it'll now stay. So we can leave it you know, pointing up over here, and it should stay. You'll definitely get some roll, so the roll will always like to roll back to center, but the pan and tilt should always stay right about where it should be. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to lift the camera up, making sure the batteries are already mounted. We're going to lift the camera up and making sh make sure that it doesn't drive right to left. If it was out of balance, the camera would, would move right. So we'll unlock it and we'll make a slight adjustment. And again, making sure that the camera doesn't drive right or left. That's going to balance your pan, uh, which is really important, especially when you're doing high moves with a lot of tilt. So now that our camera system is pretty well balanced, we're going to go through and start cabling it up and adding our extra accessories. So we're going to bring on our monitor and mount that with its NATO rail and lock that down securely. We're going to grab the cable for the fall focus motor. Now, a benefit of the cabling is you can use that to help your balance. So if you need to pull a little balance to one side, we could drag the cable around the opposite side that it's listing to because you always have a little bit of weight added by the cable itself. So we'll wrap that around neatly. Always making sure that none of your cables are going to get in the way of the gimbal or in the way of any of your other movement systems. So I like to power my motors off the back of the base. So that's going to be plugged into the base over here. Next thing we're going to do is grab our, our cables for our monitor. So this will be the power for the monitor. Plug in this limo here. And then I like to power the monitor from the uh, back of the gimbal. So I will wrap that around probably once and run that down the back. Now again, making sure that you're not going to have any impingement with the movement of the gimbal. So the cables aren't going to get in the way of your movement. Next thing we're going to do is take our SDI cable. I like to use these micro thin SDIs on a red, especially with a right angle. That helps us get up and out of the way of the gimbal itself. I'm going to run this through the back and around and connect it to our camera input, uh, our monitor input. So we're making sure that that again is nice and out of the way. The last is going to be our camera control cable. Since this is a the Cine 7 with red control, this will actually control the camera so we don't need the red monitor. So we can need this cable to be able to give it that control. And that's going to go into this box on the back. Now once that's all connected, we're going to make sure we have no drag and that all our cables are clean and out of the way. So I'd like to move everything around and just make sure. I'm going to take a bongo tie. I like to use bongo ties to help keep my cabling really neat and clean. Uh, keep everything kind of out of the way. This helps to not only keep everything balanced, but also to keep from damaging any cables or getting hung up on something during camera moves or handoffs. So we're going to make sure that there's no interference with the cables. Camera can move freely without getting caught up. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of offset on the calibration now of the gimbal. So we're gonna come back around and we're gonna make a few small adjustments. So this just needs to go forward slightly. Everything else seems to be okay. So now that the gimbal's balanced, uh, we can power it up, sort of come to the back and hit power. We wouldn't wanna touch it while this happens, let it power up and calibrate on its own. 
So once this is powered up, we'll check and make sure that it's, that it's running. We'll make a quick movement. Now, if you have any shake uh, or weird vibrations, then you can go into the auto-tune. So on the back of the Movi, we can come back here. Now on a flat, level, stable ground, we can come in to the second page and click Start Auto-Tune. And we'll let the camera run its process. Once that's done, we'll check it again and make sure that there's no extra vibrations or that any other issues with the calibration. If you need to, sometimes you have to run it twice. Uh, again, just if you, if you started with a bunch of vibration, uh, auto-tuned, and it didn't get it all out, you may have to run it a second time. Otherwise, that's it. That's how to balance a gimbal uh, and configure. I uh, hope you liked the video, and please check us out at lifedbear.com. Thank you.